All right, what's up coach? Welcome back to the channel. Now today I'm gonna show you how I've been able to stay in business for 10 plus years with my soccer training business. Now, I didn't know all of this stuff originally when I first started my business, but as I gained more experience in my business, these are the, the habits and type of mindset that I had to develop. And the other day I was watching, um, there was a YouTube, um, I think it was an interview that I was watching. And before the interview, there was an ad. It was a Tony Robbins ad. And he goes on, he's basically like, yeah, you know, 95, or sorry, 96% of businesses, of any business, they end up folding before the 10 year mark. So that means 4%, right? 4% of coaches that do this business are going to be in business for 10 plus years, right? Now, if you're the type of person that just wants to get in and get out, right? This, like my channel won't help you. My, my program won't help you. Um, I'm all about long-term thinking. And if you haven't realized that, then you probably don't pay close attention to the things that I say on this channel because oftentimes coaches that I work with, right? They get great results. They're the ones who are the, who think long-term. They're not thinking, oh, well, I just, you know, want to do this today and I don't want to do this tomorrow. Right? They want to do this for a long period of time, and they're building an asset. right? But keep in mind, 4% of, of coaches will make it past the 10-year mark. And that means, I feel like, honestly, if you take the entire population in the world, I, I really do think probably 4% of people actually think long-term. 96% don't because they're not patient enough. They're not persistent enough. They don't want to learn. People are lazy. They get distracted. And that leads me into my first point here. All right, which is building a business versus chasing the quick buck. Most coaches that reach out to me, they do this, right? They chase the quick buck. Um, they are not thinking 10 years from now. They're not even thinking one year from now. They're thinking, what is in it for me now? How can I get the most money now? Not how can I build something so later I get rewarded. They're thinking, what is in it for me now? Coaches that think long-term never think, well, what am I getting today? We don't think that way. We think, what are we doing today? So in a year from now, we can see all right, the benefit from what we did today. All right. So coaches that think long-term are always planting seeds. All right, we're planting seeds. We know that we're going to be patient. We know that, you know, when things happen like COVID, we know that that's just going to be part of part of the, the journey. Um, we know that when clients drop out, that's part of the journey. We know when someone says no on a sales call, that's part of the journey. We know when we have a down month, that's just part of the journey. We're, we're not like an up and up and down roller coaster. Um, and we're not super emotional. We're just building something, <laughs> right? We're building something. So when you build, you're building for the future. You're not building for the immediate, what do I get now, right? And people, and when I say people, coaches that chase the quick buck, 1,000% of the time that I've seen, and trust me, there's a big sample size of coaches that I've worked with already and coaches that I talk to every day. Those coaches that want the quick dollar, they will get the quick dollar, most of them, but they will be out of business within a year. That is a fact. And, you know, those types of people deserve to be out of the business. And like, I really do mean that because like, this is a business where you're dealing with kids. Like if you're dealing with kids, those are the clients that you're working with. Kids don't need someone who's just gonna be there for like a short period of time. That's actually doing a really big disservice to them, right? What kids need is they need someone that's going to be a mentor, someone that they can trust, someone that they can look up to, someone that they wanna be like, all right? If you're chasing a quick buck, you don't get that with kids. Kids don't get that with you. Um, when you're building, all right? 
And let me give you an example. Like, because I've been in building mode for the last 12, 13 years, right? I've built very strong relationships with my clients. Like, I go to their graduations. I go to dinners with, with their parents. Like, that is that happens when you think long term, right? When you do this, all right, that's the quickest way to get out of business. And honestly, like, it's easy to be in the chase the quick buck mode because of the internet, because of how distracted people are, all right? And that's that's something you have total control of. And that's, that's something you, you should hear from me. You have total control of changing your mindset. Um, and until you change your mindset, like, you won't be able to do this for 10 years, 10 plus years. Um, people that are chasing a quick buck do not know how to stay patient, right? They do not. And I see that daily with some coaches that I talk to over the phone. And, uh, you know, I, I honestly, I call people out on it now just because like, I don't want them to waste six months of their life trying to do something if they're not in it for the long haul. Right. So, Building, this is how you stay in it for a long time. This is how you get really successful in this business. Um, and and to give you some context here, there's a lot of coaches that I've worked with over the past five, six years that are very successful, like very, very successful. None of them have this mentality. They don't think about that. They're not thinking, oh, how can I just close one sale today? No, they're thinking about this. They're building a real asset, right? That is the difference, right? That is the difference. Number two, this is a question that you should always ask yourself, right? And this is a question most people don't like asking themselves, but it's who do I need to become to be successful in the long term? So that doesn't mean like who do I watch on the internet and how do, can I become that person? No, I am not saying that. I'm saying as a business owner, who do I need to become? What do I need to do? Like, what do I need to change about myself? What are the habits that I have right now that I need to get rid of? What are the distractions that are in front of me that I have full control of that I can get rid of? And who do I need to become, right? So when I, when I think about this question, this is something like for me, even though I've been in business for a very long time, I ask myself this question every 30 days. Because what I do is I surround myself around people that are way more experienced than me in business. People who have been in business for 20 to 40 years, those types of people, right? And I can pick up on the little habits that they have, how they talk about themselves. I ask them questions about you know how they make it this far in their business. What did they change? What were the biggest uh, roadblocks, biggest pitfalls, biggest success stories? Like, and you can start to gather information when you hang out with people that have been doing it longer than you, right? So that's helped me a lot just in, as far as thinking, right? And, and who do I need to be? How do I need to change, right? And that's really, really important. You can't stay the same person. Like, if you're someone who's starting a business, you have to evolve as a person. You have to evolve as a business owner. You, you don't stay the same. If you stay the same, you're not going to succeed long term. That, that's just the facts. Because no one starts a business, especially this type of business, um, knowing everything. Like, I learn new stuff every single day because I'm in the trenches every day, right? So who do I need to become to be, a success, to be successful in the long term? That is something you should write down, right? Third one, this is something that coaches unfortunately don't think about and the best coaches that i've worked with they constantly think about this it's what skills do i need to learn so i can grow my business versus how can i delegate everything now in 2021 it's very popular like you'll see videos on instagram or on youtube where everyone's like yeah like just if you're weak in something just have somebody else do it right like if you think about it that it, it makes sense what people say 
But how can you tell someone else how to do something if you haven't done it? And this is why like, I see so many people are lazy. They don't want to learn skills because they don't want to learn. Like a lot of coaches simply do not know how to learn. Like that, that in itself is a skill is learning, right? Most people cannot sit in front of a computer for one hour straight without looking at their phone. Most people, and I can, can track this on YouTube on my analytics. Most coaches cannot sit and watch an entire video. <laughs> That's like 10 minutes. It's ridiculous. So first thing I recommend is, is learn how to learn, right? Dedicate like one hour of learning time every day. Like most people can't do that. Your top competitors aren't doing that, all right? And what are the skills that I need to learn, all right? And I'll, I'll think of three skills here that I know most coaches avoid. Number one is marketing, right? Most coaches don't want to learn marketing. They're like, well, if I build a website or if I have an Instagram page, then I'm just going to get clients. That doesn't work, right? Most coaches don't know what search engine optimization is, all right? Uh, most coaches don't know how to... Um, create a really compelling landing page on their website that attracts the right type of customer. Um, so what most coaches do is they, they do the field of dreams thing where they're like, oh, if I build it, then clients will come. That, that doesn't work. It never works. It, that, that can only go so far. So, and this is why when, you, when you're thinking about something for 10 plus years, you have to think, well, what are the skills that I need to learn? All right. So marketing is one. That is a huge one that most coaches, they miss the mark. And if they become better marketers, they would be a lot more successful long-term, all right? Ultimately, that's what I help coaches with inside of my program. It is a program that helps you with your marketing and with your sales. And sales is number two. Too many coaches like to hide. They like to, to pretend like they're working and say that they're reaching out to clients and say that they're on the phone but they're not like getting on the phone and doing sales calls is the number way to learn in this business and that is the number way to improve your business if you want more clients so marketing all right is was one thing sales learning sales learning how to talk to people the, you cannot learn how to talk to people if you just read books and you listen to podcasts all day you have to talk to people <laughs> right and if you delegate those things, that can actually, you know, that can absolutely work if you bring on someone who's like already well versed in sales. But most coaches don't know how to find that person because they haven't learned sales and they don't know what to look for. This is why if you're starting your business or if you want to be in business for 10 plus years, you need to learn sales. And then you can transition that and, and, teach someone how to do your sales process. Like, for example, I'm about to bring a salesperson on. I have been studying sales like a psychopath over the last 11 years. I feel very confident and comfortable that I can bring someone on and teach them within a day everything that they need to do. And so they can go do my job and ultimately do it better than I can. Right? That is how you delegate. But most people delegate first. They don't learn, right? So that's the second thing. The third is communication, right? It is how to get better at talking with your clients, how to get better at solving problems with your clients. I mean, I could go down the list of a lot of different skills that I've had to acquire purely just based off of experience, things I wasn't thinking of at the beginning, right? So you should write down, what are the skills I need to learn, right? And with communication, if you want to be a really good communicator, right? Things that I would recommend that I've talked about for a long time on this YouTube channel. It's like you could create a podcast that goes out once a week for your clients. That forces you to work on your communication. Um, you could do videos. Like you could do one or two videos per week and post them to Facebook. And don't edit those videos. Do those videos live where you're not th overthinking, you're just talking, 
Um, you could go to Toastmasters and work on your communication skills. Like there, there's a million different ways you can learn how to get better at communicating, but most people don't want to learn, which is why mo- you know, which is why 96% of coaches are going to not make it past 10 years, right? And when you go into delegate mode, then and you don't learn that skill, then how are you going to expect that person to do a good job for you, right? So, Got to learn skills, right? And I can't force people to do that. I'm just here to try to help. I'm here to try to tell you, like, this is the reality. I've had to learn a lot of skills, skills that I did not want to learn. And those weaknesses became massive strengths for me, right? Next one, tunnel vision versus comparison syndrome. I've talked about this recently on the channel. And what I mean here is that comparison syndrome, most I would say 96% of coaches are going to wake up, go to Instagram, go see what their competitors doing locally and be like, oh, I wish I had what they had. Or, oh man, like what I'm doing is so much better than this person. Like it's this comparison game. And either way that you think out of those two examples it doesn't help your clients. It doesn't help you add future clients, right? And this is a big problem for people because every every coach has an ego, and they want to build their ego and make and make it inflated, and they want to feel good on social media, and they want people to like them and and people to comment and say how great they are. And you know, my perception on that is. You don't need that. Like, and, and for example, if I go and post something on Instagram and I get a bunch of people to like it, why does it, why do I need their approval? Why do I, why do I need, uh, the satisfaction of them liking something? Like what, what does that do for me? It doesn't do anything like that, that does nothing. And why do I need to go and see what my competitors are doing? I don't. Right. I don't. And I practice what I preach. If you go follow me on Instagram, right? And my Instagram handle, I just got back on there. It's make more money coaching sports. Pretty sure that's what it is. Um, You go there, follow me. I don't, I follow the three brands that I'm sponsored by. I don't follow anybody. Not, I'm not snooping around. Not, uh, and anyone who's a, com- a direct competitor of mine, I block them. I don't. I mean, I I don't let them see my stuff. They're gonna have to go create another account if they if they want to snoop around on my page. Um, and I don't DM them. Like I don't do anything on there other than I produce. Right. So you don't need to compare, and then you need to have tunnel vision. So this is like. You wake up in the morning, you know what you want to do, you know what, how you want to spend your day, you know what am I working on today, hour by hour. And you're not thinking about like 5,000 different business opportunities. You're thinking about how can I build my business? Like, and then, you know, when you think about these three things at the top, all right, those three things, honestly make a success, very successful business because you're going to have to change. You're going to have to be in building mode and you need to learn skills. And when you do those three things, number four is easy. Like tunnel vision is easy for someone who's learning, who changes and who is in build mode. Right now, if you're watching this and you're like, gosh, like I want to build something long term, right? If that's you, send me a message at 210-960-5771. I'm gonna type it here, 210-960-5771. That will go straight to me. Um, From there, I'll set up a chat with you, right? Actually, from there, what I'll do is I'll send you over to video that you can watch, and then we can set up a chat. Um, And if you're thinking about building something long-term, right? 
reach out to me. If you're if you're the type of person who's looking to do this, trust me, if you reach out to me, I, I'm not the guy who can help you. There's a lot of people on the internet who love helping people who are trying to chase the quick buck. That is not me. Um, that is not me. That will never be me. I don't operate that way. I hate people who think that way um, because they they are not in it to serve their clients. They are in it for themselves. And those people take shortcuts. Those people never do a good job. Those people never uh, be disciplined. I, I hate those types of people. So like I, I'm aiming here at the top 4% of coaches that are building, right? If, if you're a builder, text me here. If you're chasing a quick buck, don't text me. <laughs> That's it for today's video. I know this was a longer one, but you know this shows you how I've been in business for so long and while I'll continue to be in business for the foreseeable future, for as long as, as I'm alive, <laughs> all right? That's it. Hope this helps. Shoot me a text if you're a builder. See you later.